Hello friends, welcome to our fifth presentation from the series War in Heaven. In this occasion, our topic is going to have the title, Don't Worship the Beast. Don't Worship the Beast. And mainly we are going to study the book of Revelation and especially Revelation chapter 13, starting from verse 1 to verse 10. But prior to read this Bible passage, I want to invite you to read with me from the Bible, from the book of Revelation chapter 14. And here we want to read, starting at verse 9, the message of the third angel's message. Listen what the Bible is saying here. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. I want to stop. In these last days, as we have studied previously in our presentations, we have seen that only two groups will remain in these last days. Those who worship God the Creator, according to Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 and 7, as we can read together from here, verse 7, saying with the loud voice, this is the message of the first angel's message, saying with the loud voice, fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea, on the fountains of water. So this is the first group that we are going to see in these last days. Those who worship the true God, the living God, God the Creator. But it's going to be a, another group. Those people who are going to worship the beast, its image, and receive the mark of the beast. Now, it is very simple for us to understand that behind this worship of the beast, is even Satan, because he is the one that tried from the beginning, as we have studied previously in our presentations, he is the one that want to receive that worship that is belonging only to God, God the Creator. Now, whosoever this beast is on this earth is inviting the people to give to her what only is belonging to God. Now, is our focus in this Bible study to identify with the Bible who this beast is. In our message, don't worship the beast. Now, this beast that we are being told here in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 9, this beast is the first beast that is being presented in Revelation, chapter 13, starting at verse 1 till verse 10. And I want you, at this moment, to take your Bibles. Please take a pen and a paper, because in this Bible study, we will not only identify who this beast is, but we will see that this beast is no other than the Antichrist of Bible prophecy. Now, let's read together Revelation chapter 13, and we want to read starting at verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. We will use only the Bible to decode these symbols that we are reading here in the book of Revelation. So according to the words of John, he saw a beast coming out out from the sea. Our first question as we are continuing this Bible study is this. What is the sea? What symbolizes sea in Bible prophecy? Let's read together the first account in the Bible where we see this word sea. And we are going in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. And we want to read from there from verse 8 to verse 10. And they will find out a synonym for this word, seas. The Bible is saying, And God called the firmament heaven. 
and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and God saw that it was good. So according to this Bible passage, remember, that beast is rising up out from the sea. We have studied right now in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, from verse 8 to verse 10, that in the Bible, a synonym that we can use for sea is gathering of waters. Now, when we read in the book of Revelation that that beast, even the first beast, come out, rise up from the water, we need to understand what are water symbolizing in Bible prophecy. Let's use the Bible to see what this water represents. And we want to go in the book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 15. Revelation, chapter 17, verse 15. Look what the Bible is saying here. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sowest, where the whore seated, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Now, remember, the Bible is saying that that beast rise up out from the sea, gathering of waters, that means a very populated area on this earth where we find people, multitudes, nations, and tongues. For everything that we are going to study in this Bible class, we will use two witnesses to say the same thing. Let's go together in the book of Isaiah chapter 17. Isaiah chapter 17, and we want to read from there verse 12 and verse 13. And again we will see that waters in Bible prophecy symbolize a very populated area on this earth. Isaiah chapter 17, and we want to read verse 12 and verse 13. Listen what the Bible is saying here. Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. So you see, waters, mighty nations, seas. Verse 13, the nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters. But God shall rebuke them, and they shall flee far off. So, again, see in Bible prophecy, we can call it also gathering of waters. A gathering of waters in Bible prophecy symbolizes a very populated area on this earth. So we are going back in the book of Revelation chapter 13, because we want to make this message Crystal clear, my friends, we will use only the Bible. There are many discussions about who this beast is, but would we'll let the Bible to speak for herself. Listen what the Bible is saying here in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. So a beast coming out from a populated area. Now, I hope that nobody is thinking that we will see a beast coming from the Atlantic Ocean or from the Pacific Ocean. We are speaking about symbols in Bible prophecy. Now, what does a beast represent in Bible prophecy? A beast in Bible prophecy symbolizes a nation, a nation, a political power. Let's read together this thing in the book of Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7, and we want to read from there verse 23. Daniel chapter 7 in verse 23. The Bible is saying, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth 
kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all, all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. So you see, the fourth bit, beast, represent a nation. This is a kingdom. This is a political power. Again and again in the Bible, we are seeing the same thing. God is speaking about nations, kingdoms, and he is using this language of the beast. Let's read Daniel chapter 8, for example, and we read from there verse 20 and 21. And you will see that God is using animals, beasts, to describe certain powers on this earth. Listen what the Bible is saying in Daniel chapter 8, verse 20 and 21. The Bible is saying, The ram which thou sowest, having two horns, are the kings of Media and Persia. Verse 21, And the rough gold is the king of Grecia, and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. So you see here, the ram with two horns, in Bible prophecy, this animal, this beast, represented the kingdom of Medo-Persia. And that ram with that big horn between his eyes was the kingdom of Greece under the ruling of first king, even Alexander the Great. But this is not our main study in this occasion. What I'm trying to say, again and again in the Bible, a beast represents a political power, a nation, a kingdom. For those who are taking notes, you can write down Acts chapter 10 and Acts chapter 11, New Testament, when we can see the same thing. When Peter had that vision with those animals, those beasts, and a command was coming from heaven, Peter cut all these things and it. And if you read carefully, especially the book of Acts chapter 11, you will see that those beasts represented nations, nations that needed the message of the gospel. So beasts in Bible prophecy represent a nation, a kingdom, a political power. Even today, there are certain animals, certain beasts, when you speak about them, immediately you think about a nation. For example, if you say kangaroo, you are not thinking on Denmark. You are thinking on Australia. If you say panda bear, immediately you think of China. And I can continue with these examples. Now, according to the book of Revelation, chapter 13, we saw a beast. This is a nation, a kingdom, a political power that is coming out from the sea gathering of waters, a very populated area where we find people, multitudes, tongues. We saw that kingdom rising up. Let's go back in the book of Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13 and see more characteristic about this beast that God said don't worship this beast. Listen what the Bible is saying in verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Now, for a short time, we will put aside this material found in verse 1, where we are speaking about this beast having seven heads and ten horns will come back very, very, very immediately as this study is going to continue. But see what the Bible is saying in verse 1. That this beast is having name of blasphemy. So this is a blasphemous power. A power that is speaking great words against who we'll see against God. Now... What does it mean to have a name in the Bible? A name in the Bible is symbolizing character. Let me prove you from the Bible using only the inspired word of God. Let's read together from the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 
and we want to read 1 Samuel chapter 25, and from there we will read together verse 25. Name in the Bible represent character. Listen what the Bible is saying here. 1 Samuel chapter 25, and we want to read from here verse 25. The Bible says, Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I thine handmaid saw not the young man of my Lord, whom thou didst send. So you see, the name of this man was Nabal, that is being translated a man that is full of folly, foolish man. And the Bible is saying, verse 25, for as his name is, so is he. So name in the Bible represent points to character. Let's have a second witness in the Bible. We'll go together in the book of Exodus chapter 34. Exodus chapter 34, the Bible is saying, starting at verse, verse 5. Listen what the Bible is saying here. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. Let's listen together what is the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. So mark these words that are found here in Exodus chapter 34, that God proclaimed the name of the Lord. And then he said, Lord, the Lord God is full of, of mercy, long-suffering, abundant in goodness, in truth, keeping mercy for thousands. God is describing his name. These are qualities of his character. So again, name in the Bible represent character, my friends. Do you remember what we have read together from the book of Revelation? That this beast this nation that is coming out from that populated area is coming name. That means a character of blasphemy. This is the character of this beast. She is blaspheming the Lord, even God the creator. Now, according to the Bible, there are certain clear definitions of blasphemy in the Bible. Let's read together. The first definition of blasphemy that we found in the Bible is this one. The pretension of a man that is saying that he is able to forgive the sins that only God is able to forgive. I repeat again. When somebody says, a man, a creature, that he is able to forgive the sins of other people, in the Bible this thing is called blasphemy. Let's read together these facts. Go with me in the book of Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, and we want to read from here, from verse 5 to verse 7. The Bible says, When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And the reason why Jesus was able to say this, because he was God. He is the Son of God. Listen what the Bible is saying. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why do this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Because they look at Jesus and they think Jesus that was merely a man, they accuse him of blasphemy because he said that he had power to forgive sins the same thing you'll find out in luke chapter 5 verse 21 so the first definition of blasphemy 
is that pretension of a man, of a creature that is saying that he is able to forgive the sins of men. Second definition of blasphemy, according to the Bible, and when a man is saying that he is taking the place of God, or he is the representative of God here on earth. Let's read together that. Go with me into the book of John. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. And I hope, my dear friends, that you are taking notes. Because this Bible study can be salvational for you and even for me. We don't need to worship that beast. God is warning. If we are going to worship the beast and its image and receive her mark, we will receive the wrath of God, even the seven last plagues. This is not a joke. This is a serious message that has to be proclaimed with a loud voice according to Revelation chapter 14 verse 9. Listen what the Bible is saying in John chapter 10, verse 30, from, from verse 30 to verse 33. The second definition of blasphemy. I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answer him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. So the second definition of blasphemy is when a man, a creature, claims to be God or the representative of God here on earth. Let's prove again with the Bible. Go with me into the book of Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. The Bible is saying in Matthew chapter 26, starting at verse 63. Listen what the Bible is saying here. But Jesus held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto thee, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He hath spoken blasphemy. What further need have ye of witnesses? So when Jesus Christ said that he is the Son of God, he is God, they accused him of blasphemy. So the second definition of blasphemy is when a man, he is saying that he is God, he is on earth, or he is the representative, he is the vicarious of God, the one that is taking place of God, here on this earth. Now, let's make an overview of what we have studied so far. According to the Bible, in the book of Revelation chapter 13, verse 1, the Bible is saying that the beast, this is a nation, this is a political power, this is a kingdom, will rise up from a populated area on this earth. But this beast is not only a state, is not only a political power, is not only a nation, but is having a religious aspect. Why? Because he's having the character of blasphemy. He is pretending to forgive the sins of men, thing that only God is able to do. Secondly, she said that he is the representative of God here on earth. Do you know that according to the Bible, in Revelation chapter 13, this beast asked for worship. Let's read together. Revelation chapter 13. And we want to read together. Revelation chapter 13. And we want to read together starting at verse 4. Our message, don't worship the beast. The Bible is saying, And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, 
who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him so you see that the beast ask for worship listen what the bible is saying in verse 8 and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him again the bible is mentioning that this beast asked for worship you can write down Revelation chapter 14, 9, where the third angel message is saying, if any man worship the beast. So whosoever this beast it is, is taking the place of God here on this earth because only God needs to receive our worship because he is our creator. Now, my friends, that means that this beast is a union between church and state. It is not only a political power, but it's having also a religious aspect. It's a combination of church and state that we will see developing and working in these last days. Let's go further. According to this Bible passage, this union between church and state is having an influence into the entire world. This is a super power on this earth. Listen what the Bible is saying in Revelation chapter 13. And let's read verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded of death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wonder after the beast. So it seemed that wherever this union of church and state is being present, the whole world is wandering after the beast. Look what the Bible is saying in verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So you see, he's having uh, influence into the entire world. Worldly power. This is a super power. Listen again about the influence. Verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. So this union of church and state with this character of blasphemy that is pretending to forgive the sins of man, that is prote pr pretending to take the place of God here on this earth is not a union of church and state that is being done in, in secret. This is something that is even in our faces hidden in plain sight, but can remain hidden for you and me if we are not studying our Bibles. Secondly, this power has received the seed and great authority from the dragon. Now, I told you we need to put pause in verse 1 for reason. Let's go together in Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13, and let's read from verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Now verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of the bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. I want to pause for a second. If I will have time, uh, we can go deeper and deeper in this Bible passage. But for, for, for the sake of time, and I want you not to miss the most important points, I want to tell you that in verse 2, we can see that this power is an antichrist power because she is pretending to work exactly like God. Let me uh, read again verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, underline leopard. And his feet were as the feet of a bear, underline bear. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. So we have leopard, bear, lion. Go with me and see in the book of Hosea something very interesting. Hosea. Chapter 13, we are going in the Old Testament. We have Daniel, Hosea. Hosea chapter 13, and we want to read from there, starting at verse 
Let's read from verse 4. The Bible is saying, Yet I am the Lord thy God, from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me, for is there is no Savior beside me. I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. According to their pasture, so where they filled, they were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore have they forgotten me. Now listen, verse 7. Therefore I will be unto them. God is speaking here. I will be unto them as a lion. Underline lion. As a leopard, by the way, will I observe them. I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved of her whelps. And I will rend the call of their heart, and there will I devour them like a lion. The wild beast shall tear them. Now, you see here, God is symbolizing his work like a work of a lion. The work of a leopard, the work of a bear. And we saw the same characteristic in the book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 2. There is a deeper meaning of those things if you study Daniel chapter 7. But for the sake of time, and because I want you to remain to the most important things, we'll not go deeper. But what I'm trying to say to you, this union of church and state is copying is trying to counterfeit the work of Christ. It is an antichrist power. An antichrist doesn't mean that is only against Christ. It can mean also that is copying the work of Christ today. Now, we are being told in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 that this is going to be this is going to be the agenda of Satan in these last days. His agents, even this beast found in book of Revelation chapter 13, they will work like servants of righteousness. People, they will think that these are the apostles of Christ, when in their reality, they are only serving the agenda, the hidden agenda of Satan. Listen what the Bible is saying in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And I hope that you are taking notes, my friends. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and we want to read starting at verse, at verse 13. The Bible is saying, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. So you think that these are the servants of Christ, but in reality, they are working for whom? They are working for Satan. The Bible is saying, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, there is no great thing if his ministers, even that beast that we have read in the book of Revelation 13, that agent, also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. I want to make a pause, and I want to throw to you a very important thing. Do you know that Satan is having his message on righteousness by faith? Do you know that according to this Bible passage, in these last days, people, they will think that they will hear the message of righteousness by faith, but this is the message that is coming straight from the devil. Even though that is done in the name of Christ, ministers, apostles of Christ. Now, we are going back in the book of Revelation. Remember what we have studied so far. We have a beast. This is a nation, a kingdom, a political power that is having also religious aspect. Why? Because it's having the name, a character of blasphemy, pretending to forgive the sins of people. Secondly, she is claiming to be the representative of God, even God here on this earth. She asked for worship. That means that there is a union between church and state with all worldwide influence, influencing the whole world, and also having this character, Antichrist character, copying the work of Jesus Christ. Who is this power? Who is this union between church and state that is deceiving even today? And the whole world is wandering after this beast. 
My friends, let us conclude this first part of the study and make this topic crystal clear. Revelation chapter 13, and we want to read again verse 1 and 2. Listen what the Bible is saying here. The Bible is saying, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw beasts rise up out of the sea, now listen, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his name heads the name of blasphemy. So this beast is having, listen, the Bible is saying, seven heads and ten horns. Look in verse 2. The Bible is saying that the dragon gave him, listen, his power and his seat and great authority. Very interesting. Now, in Revelation chapter 12, we see the dragon, this beast, having seven horns and seven heads and ten horns. Listen what the Bible is saying. Revelation chapter 12, verse 3 and verse 4. The Bible is saying, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads, listen, and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon, now listen, this dragon that was having seven heads and ten horns, the Bible is saying, and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Imagine yourself. There is a woman that she is having this pain of birth. She is preparing to give birth to a child with masculine gender. And since of this situation, Satan, the Bible is being presented, the dragon is being presented, that's staying there, waiting that this child to come on this world and kill him, even from his birth. I wonder, who is this child that was born in this world and Satan tried to destroy him even from his birth? The Bible is saying in verse 5, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with the rod of, of, rod of iron, and her child was cut up unto God and to his throne. Who is that child? that is having this masculine gender that was born in this world, and even from his birth, the dragon tried to kill him. Even this dragon, this beast with seven, ho seven heads and ten horns, tried to kill him from his birth. But this child was saved, and right now she is sitting on the right hand of, of the throne of God. Who is this child? This child is no other than Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, let me ask you, did Satan try to kill Jesus at the beginning? Yes, my friends. The dragon, this, this power that was having seven heads and ten horns, tried to kill Jesus, but was not Satan himself in person that was there waiting to kill Jesus. Satan is having many agents. And at that time, this dragon also represent, this beast with seven heads and ten horns represent pagan Rome that Satan used through Jared to kill Jesus from his birth. Let's read together in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 2. Remember, my friends, that the power that was in ruling in Christ's day was Rome, the Rome of the Caesars. Listen what the Bible is saying in Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, and we want to read starting at verse 13, verse 16, and verse 19. The Bible is saying, And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to, jo to Joseph in a dream, saying, 
arise and take the young child and his mother and flee unto Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. So who was using Satan, the dragon, to kill Jesus? Herod. Verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and set forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he was had diligently acquainted of the wise men. And you can read the same thing in verse 19. What I'm trying to say, when the Bible is saying that the dragon gave the seed power and authority to this union of church and state, when the Bible is saying that this beast was having seven heads, and ten horns, in actuality, what we understand, that this union of church and state is sitting with the Roman Empire. The Roman of Caesar had power in the past. Let me ask you right now. Who can be this beast that is staying in a place where Rome had in the past authority. Right now, there is a union between a political power, a political power, and also there is a union between the religious power. There is a union of church and state that is having influence into the entire world. The whole world is wandering after this beast that is having a territory only of 108 acres. Now, she is also claiming to forgive sins. Secondly, she said that he, she is the representative, the vicar of Christ. She is taking the place of God on this earth, and she receives worship from the people. Who can this beast be? My friends, we cannot be blind. All these characteristics are found only in one power, one power, and this power, this system that the Bible is speaking against, this is the Roman Catholic system. This is the Roman Catholic Church. And I want to make a break and tell you a very important thing. Some people, they may think that we have an anti-Catholic people agenda. No, my friends. No, this is far away from the truth. God has sincere people in the Catholic Church. God has sincere people in other churches. The Bible is saying in Revelation chapter 18 verse 4, Come out from Babylon. Come out from her, my people. God is having a people that they are living according to all the light that they have. But what God is condemning are not the people. What God is condemning is the system and this system is being ruled under the power and authority of satan himself because the bible is saying that satan is behind false worship so god is pleading that in these last days we shall not fall down and bow our knees in front of this false worship that is going to be promoted by the catholic church by the Catholic Church. Now, my friends, let me ask you this further. Do you know that according to the Bible, this power has been and will be in the future a persecuting power? Have you heard about dark ages? Have you heard about inquisition? Have you heard about reformation? Recently, the world, even the Protestant churches, they go back to Mother Rome saying that the Roman Catholic Church system has changed. No, my friends. Remember, in Revelation chapter 13, verse 2, the Bible is describing this power as having the body of a leopard, feet as feet of a bear, and a mouth of a lion. So when you look from far away, 
what you see is not so much the mouth of a lion, not so much the feet of a bear. What you see is the body of a leopard. This is the major part of this, of this union of church and state. Now, if you take notes, write down Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 23, and you will discover from the Bible that God said very clearly that never a leopard will not change his spots. That means that papacy will never change. This Roman Catholic system will never change. The Protestant will change, but Rome never. She is working just like a chameleon in these last days, preparing herself for the last strike. And we can see this agenda being fulfilled even as we are speaking right here. Have you not seen what happened in Sweden recently in Malmo? Have you not seen what happened recently in Germany? Have you not seen that the people are saying that the protest is over because the beast, the antichrist power has changed and we are looking to another face. Yes, my friends, we are looking to another face, the face of the chameleon. Listen right now. The Bible is saying in Revelation chapter 13 that this power is a persecuting power used to persecute God's people in the past and it will persecute again God's people in the future. Let's go back in the book of Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13 and we want to read from here starting at verse, verse, let's read from here, verse 5. Listen what the Bible is saying. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. I want you to underline in your Bible this phrase. Power was given unto her to continue to work for forty-two months. Let's examine with the book of Revelation, what does it mean, this expression in Revelation, when somebody receives power to work? Go with me in the book of Revelation, chapter 6. Revelation, chapter 6, and we want to read from here, verse 3 and 4. Listen what the Bible is saying. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. Now listen. And power was given unto him. Underline. Power was given unto him. For what? That sat thereon to take peace from the earth. And that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So when the Bible is using this phrase, Power was given unto him. This is persecuting power. Look in Revelation chapter 6, and we want to read from here verse 7 and 8. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was dead. And hell followed with him. And power, listen right now, Power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill. That means to persecute with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. So this expression in the Bible, power was given unto her to work. That means persecution was starting. This is a persecuting power. Listen again, another witness. Let's go in the book of Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9, and we want to read from here, Revelation chapter 9, and we want to read starting at verse 3. The Bible is saying, And there come out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Again, was given power. Now for what? And it was commanded, verse 4, 
them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads, and do and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. Now, power was given, this expression also, not only to kill, to persecute to the point of death, but also to torture people. And this was the work of the Roman Catholic Church, the Catholic system the Antichrist of Bible prophecy, for 42 months, they were battling, they were killing, they were, they were trying to, the Bible is saying here, use the, the word, this word, they were tormenting, they were tormenting God's people to renounce the truth. Do you remember about Jan Hus? Do you remember the pioneers of Protestantism? Do you remember what happened with Luther? in the died in worms? Do you remember what happened with Ridley? Do you remember what happened with all the pioneers of Protestantism? Those people that wanted to live according to the Bible and the Bible alone. The Bible is saying that this power will have received power, even persecuting power, to work for 42 months. What does it mean 42 months in Bible prophecy? Go with me in the book of Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11 and see in the Bible that this period of 42 months is being depicted in another number, the same thing it is, another number in Bible prophecy. Revelation chapter 11 and we want to read starting at verse 1. And there was given me a reed a red like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court, which is without the temple, leave it out, and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they trend under foot forty and two months. So we see the same period mentioned here in Revelation chapter 11. Now listen verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, that they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clocked in sackcloth. Now, these 42 months, they, ha they are having this correspondent in the book of Revelation. The Bible is saying two thousand two hundred and three score days is the same period in the book of of Revelation. Now, also in the book of Revelation, we can say in another words, the same time period that we read here in Revelation chapter 11 and Revelation chapter 13, 42 months or 1,260 prophetical days. Listen how the Bible is putting the same period in Revelation 12 verse 6. The Bible is saying, and the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. So we have a woman that fled into the wilderness in a place prepared by God, and in that place prepared by God, she was fed for one thousand two hundred and sixty prophetical days. Days. Now, listen how the Bible is putting the same period in Revelation 12, 14. The Bible is saying, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness. Again, a woman into the wilderness. Now listen. Into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half of time from the face of of the serpent. So according to the Bible, 42 months is the same period with 1,260 prophetical days. These days we can spoke about them in the Bible as being time, times, and the dividing 
of times. And this was the period when the papacy from 538 till 70, 98, she persecuted God's people, those who wanted to remain to the Bible principles. To the Bible principles. But something happened. The Bible said that this beast received a deadly wound. A deadly wound. The Bible speaks about this. Now, let's be very precise in what we are studying right now in the Bible. Do you remember, my friends, where in the Bible, in our last presentation, clean the house? We have studied and discover that according to the Bible, somebody with man authority, not from God, authority from man, touch upon the commandments of God and change times and laws, even that commandment from the Ten Commandments, the commandment that is speaking that we need to give worship only to God the Creator. This is the fourth commandment. Let's go back in the book of Revelation, in Daniel chapter 7, and see that little horn power from Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, is no other than this beast power found in Revelation chapter 13. The same agent we see here in Revelation. Let's read Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7, and we want to read together Starting at verse 25. Listen what the Bible is saying. And she, he shall speak great words against the most high. What type of words? The Bible is saying that these are words of blasphemy. The little horn will pretend to forgive the sins of people. The little horn will pretend that he is the representative of God here on this earth. He will speak words against the most high God, God the creator, and shall wear out the saints of the most high. He will start the persecution against the saints of the most high God. When who are the saints of God? Bible says in Revelation chapter 14 verse 12, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Why these saints of God were persecuted? Because they remained on the commandments of God. Listen what the Bible is saying further. Verse 25. And he shall speak great words again the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. My friends, it was the little horn power. It was the, the beast from Revelation chapter 13. Listen again. The Bible is saying, And there shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of times. So you see, the same period. 42 months, 1,260 days. This is time, times, dividing of times. The same time when the Catholic Church, the Catholic system, the Antichrist of Bible prophecy was persecuting God's saints between 538 to 1798 when she received that deadly wound. It is the Roman Catholic Church that changed the Sabbath day, that commandment that is dealing with time. And there is only one commandment that is dealing with time. That commandment is the fourth commandment. It was only the Catholic Church that was able with man authority to change the Ten Commandments. The true Sabbath with a spurious Sabbath, a deceitful Sabbath. My friends, and this is why almost the entire world are worshipping a false day of worship. This is why we are reading in the Bible in Revelation chapter 13, 3. That the whole world was wandering after the beast. Are we not seeing what is happening? Have we not seen the president of this world going and bow their knees in front of this power? It is because she is that power that is ruling the kings of this world. She is that power. The Bible is saying in Revelation chapter 17. Open with me. 
as we want to conclude this Bible study. Don't worship the beast. This is our message in this occasion. And I want to tell you again, my friends, we are not anti-Catholic people. We love Catholics. May God bless them and hear their pray prayers if they are sincere. But what we understand from the Bible, that God is the one, not the preacher. God is the one that wants to warn the whole world. If anyone worship the beast, this false worship that is being promoted by the beast will receive the wrath of the living God. This is not, this is not criticism. This is not fundamentalism. This is not extremism. This is not terrorism. This is a thus said the Lord. Listen what the Bible is saying in the book of Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17. The Bible is saying in verse, Revelation chapter 17, and I want to read from there, verse 18. And the woman which thou the Bible is saying, so is, is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So we have a woman that there is a great city, and she rule over all the kings of the world. What does a woman in Bible prophecy represent? In our last study, the Bible is saying in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, 31, 32, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2, Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 20, the Bible is saying that the woman in Bible prophecy represents a church. So we have a church that there is a great city that is leading all the leaders of the world. Do you know any church, any church? That is a union between church and state that is ruling and all the leaders of the church are, of the world are bowing frequently their knees before this power. Now listen again, Revelation chapter 7, 17, and we want to read verse 9. Listen what the Bible is saying here. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. So this woman, that means this church, is sitting upon seven mountains. There is a great city, and from that city, she is ruling the whole world, the leaders of the world. If I remember correctly, Rome is called the city of the seven hills. You can look on internet, Google it, and you will see the names of those hills. Capitoline, Escaline, you will see all the names of those hills. This is that power, my friends, that is ruling the whole world. And the Bible is saying that in these last days, people will be called to worship falsely, worship the beast. Revelation 14, 9. If anyone worship the beast, the Bible is saying, this beast will ask for worship, and those who reject the worship of the beast, they will be even sent to death in these last days. Now listen what the Bible is saying in Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13, and we want to read starting at verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So what happened if we will not worship the image of the beast? The beast? Some people, they will be even sent to death. But I wonder, what type of worship is this union between church of and state promote? Do you remember, my friends? is that worship that is putting aside the commandments of God, even the fourth commandment, that commandment that was changed according to Daniel chapter 7, 25. The little horn power, the Catholic system, the Antichrist or Bible prophecy, with man authority, changed the law 
of the living God, and especially the fourth commandment. Do you know that even themselves, they recognize this? If you look into the, into the uh, Catholic Catechism, you can see right there clearly that they recognize that Saturday is God's holy day, the Sabbath, even the seventh day. Why? They are asking, we are keeping Sunday. It is because we have baptized the day of the sun in Christianity. Sun day in English. This is the day of the sun. And if you are looking all around the world, there are so many languages where you found on for the day Saturday, you have the word Sabbath. If you go in Russia, they have the word, the word that is describing the, the seventh day, Subota. Polish people, Italian, Sabato, Spanish people, not only Hebrews, in so many languages, Saturday is the Sabbath. But somebody twisted the mind of the people. My friends, in these last days, the Bible is saying that we will see this power, this power ascending again back to her influence that was lost in the past. And let me tell you, friends, we are not far away from this. The Bible is saying that the whole world was wandering after the beast. In these last days, only two groups will remain. And I want to read again about them. Let's go together in Revelation chapter 14. And I want to read the first group, the, the group that will be on the winning side. The group that will not receive the, the mark of the beast. They will not worship the beast and its image. Those people that are worshiping in spirit and truth. Those people, they will worship the true God, even God the creator. Listen what the Bible is saying in Revelation chapter 14. And we want to read together verse 6 and 7. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. And worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. So the first group, there will be those that are going to worship God. And they will remain to his commandments. Listen what the Bible is saying in verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. This is the first group. But there is another group. The Bible is saying, Revelation chapter 14 verse 9. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest, underline, those who receive the mark of the beast and worship the beast, they have no rest. Listen, no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. My friends, the only shield. The only protection that will have against the mark of the beast. This mark that is going to be pushed by law. By a Roman Catholic Church. With all the leaders of the world at one point. Our only shield and protection is going to be the commandments of God. And especially that commandment that is giving us rest. Even the Sabbath rest. According to this Bible study, we understand that the mark of the beast, we will study in our future presentation about the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is going against 
the commandments of God. Because if you will keep the commandments of God, you will not receive the mark of the beast. That means that the mark of the beast is happening something against the commandments of God. And the, especially the fourth commandment. Because that commandment is being under attack even from heaven as we have studied so far. My friends, final words. I believe with all my heart that the Bible is plain. I appeal to the hearts of those people who are considering themselves Protestants. Go back to the Bible. Go back and study. Go back and remember that Martin Luther was a Protestant. He was having a message clearly about the Antichrist power that he identified as being the Roman Catholic Church papacy. The system of papacy. My friends, what pain would have been in the heart of Martin Luther to see the Lutherans today bowing their knees in front this beast that we may think has changed. No, my friends, no change will be. The Protestant world will change. And finally, persecution will start again against those people that they want to remain faithful to the commandments of God. This message is not anti-Catholic. This message has nothing to do against people. I have wonderful friends that are Roman Catholics, people who I respect them. And I am praying from them that at the right time they open their eyes and understand what the Bible is saying. God is having a people there and he is calling them out, out from Babylon till it's too late. May God help us in these days to remain faithful in the sight of the Lord. Because we don't have power on ourselves. But Jesus Christ, Michael, he will win again in this great controversy at the end that first started in heaven. Friends, the Bible is the inspired word of God. It is the only book that can tell us who is the beast that wants to receive worship. May the Lord help us to avoid this false worship in these last days. Amen.